and welcome to our top five tips for, for people after you have bought a property in Spain. There are plenty of tips around for uh, how to look for a property, how to find a property, the legal process, but what happens after you've bought somewhere? And um, there doesn't seem to be much help around for that, and I'm constantly getting asked the question, what do I need to do now? So this video is to help you out once you've bought your property in Spain. Number one is a non-residence tax. If you're not looking to become a Spanish resident and to live here full time and permanently, maybe with a visa or you may not need a visa, but uh, if you're not planning to live here full time, then this is quite an important one for you. As a non-resident, you can own a home here, which maybe you use for a holiday home or you might want to rent out or you're planning to retire here in the future, maybe, or move here in the future. You will be liable to a non-resident tax. Many clients don't know about this and in fact haven't paid it for years, so could potentially be in line for a big fine if they don't do it. In fact, you have a legal obligation to submit a non-residence tax return each year. You will also need to do one for each and every property that you own and for each person who owns a property as a non-resident. How the tax is calculated does vary from year to year and certainly from location to location. But in essence, you'll be applying a percentage of the cadastral value of your property. And so it is really important to get proper advice on uh, how to submit this and the amounts that need to be paid. Number two, this relates to your NIE number. This is an identification number for all foreign people in Spain and it's also a tax identification number. You will need this for pretty much everything. In fact, it's unlikely you will have been able to buy a house without an NIE number. You'll certainly need it for buying a car, opening a bank account, um, even if you purchase a TV, for example, you'll be asked for it or for an internet connection. Um, virtually everything in Spain revolves around your NIE number. Your certificate that uh, has your NIE number on it is very, very important and you should always keep the original very safe and maybe take a few copies so that you have them with you. Number three relates to official notification. This is something you'll probably become very familiar with over time in Spain. Many of the official notifications, such as tax bills and uh, anything else relating to your, to your property or to yourself in Spain, will often be sent to your address. However, if you're not living in Spain full time, how will you know you've received it? It's quite easy to have something come through. Maybe you were driving back to the airport and um, have suddenly picked up a, a speeding ticket from, from one of the many cameras around the airports. This gets sent to your address in Spain, but of course you don't come back for several months. The fines are going to increase quite considerably without you being aware of it. So this is, this is quite a risk. There is quite a simple way around this, and many agents, uh, ourselves included, will offer a free postal service for people who, and many agents, ourselves included, will offer a postal service so that you can use the office address as your official notification. This way, if you are away for a few months and something comes through, we can always uh, open the letter for you, scan it, send you a copy, and potentially deal with anything that's needed at the time to help you out. Number four. Am I a tax resident? This is a question, again, comes up regularly with people. The, with any tax uh, situation, it's really important to get proper professional advice to ensure that your personal circumstances are catered for. It's impossible to give a, a, an overview that will cover everybody. But there are some general rules that you can follow. For example, if you spend more than 183 days in Spain, uh, you will automatically become a tax resident whether you have registered or not. This is particularly important if you're planning on spending any time in Spain, as the tax regime in Spain can be very different to a number of other Northern European countries, and in particular for our US and Canadian clients. Uh, so it's really important to get some excellent advice if you're planning on spending more than 183 days in any 12 month period in Spain. Being a tax resident is very different from being a resident. For example, you could apply for a visa, you would normally, sorry, apply for a visa uh, for residency, but tax residency is an automatic status. So it's one to be very careful of. Uh, if you're unsure, don't hesitate to get in touch and we can certainly help you with that. Uh, because as I said, everyone is individual, so do look out for this one. I know it has caught a lot of people out in the past. One of the ways it can do this 
is if, for example, you are selling a property in another country in which you have made quite a large capital gain over the years and then moved to Spain, if you become a tax resident in that year, you could end up paying capital gains on the property that you have sold in another country. For many people, they're releasing the equity from that property in order to live here. So it's very important to get the correct advice on the right time of year to do these things if you're selling the property in another country to move here. Number five, can I rent my property out in Spain? Well, this is a multifaceted uh, question and answer really because it depends on the type of rental. So for example, if you're looking to do holiday rentals, uh, i.e. short term lets, while you're not living in your property, then you will need a license to do this, particularly in, in Andalusia. The regulations do change slightly in different parts of the country, so I'll focus on Andalusia for the moment, where you will need to obtain a license. There are different types of licenses as well, so it's very important that you get the correct one. For example, some licenses only allow you to rent a property for up to 90 days in any one year. Others will allow you to rent all year, but Potentially, if you're doing that, it could be classed that you're running a business. So, again, you need to get some very specific advice on what is the correct type of license for you to apply for. When it comes to doing long-term lets, the regulations on starting this are um, a little less strict than on the holiday lets. Um, but again, you will be paying tax on the, uh, the income, and this can vary if you're a resident or a non-resident. And if you're doing long-term lets, there are some quite specific legislation that you will uh, fall under as a landlord if you're renting to people on a long-term basis. This legislation can be quite different to many Northern European countries uh, and in particular, so do get in touch for some advice on that if you're looking to do a long-term rental. Finally, for those who stayed to the end, here's a bonus tip. Um, enjoy yourself. Part of the reasons that you're looking to buy somewhere in Spain or move to Spain, I'm sure is for the lifestyle here. It's absolutely wonderful. Outdoor dining, warm winters. I know some people won't find the winters warm. Um, I guess it's comparative. Um, having grown up in, in Northern Europe, I find the winters here quite warm. Um, but uh, overall, don't forget to enjoy yourself. The bureaucracy in Spain can be quite frustrating sometimes. So it's always good to have an advisor on hand who can help you with that. Here at uh, Lamparan and Orkiva Property, we do work with a number of companies who are able to provide you with those services and help you through the minefield of bureaucracy. So don't be afraid to get in touch and ask for help. That's what we're here for at the end of the day. And if you have any other questions, don't forget to pop them in the comments uh, and we'll be able to answer them for you or make a video specifically for them to help. Um, and in the meantime, don't forget to like, subscribe and click that notification bell so that you know every time there's a new video coming out. Thank you for watching. I'm Matthew from Lanharan and Orkiva Property and I look forward to uh, helping you with some more questions soon. Goodbye for now.